Now we will discuss about different techniques used in assessment of HLA profile of a person for organ transplant. There are different aspects of assessment of HLA profile. One aspect is HLA typing. In HLA typing, we identify which HLA antigens or HLA molecules a person has. If we perform analysis at DNA level, we can identify which HLA alleles a person has. Second aspect of assessment of HLA profile is assessment of HLA antibodies. If a person is exposed to non-self HLA molecules, it can result in formation of anti-HLA antibodies. So in recipient, we want to know if there are any anti-HLA antibodies present and if these antibodies are present, what are their specificities. Finally, we will discuss about cross-match. In cross-match, we identify if recipient has any antibodies that are specific against donor HLA molecules. In HLA class 1 region, three genes are present on each chromosome. So if a person has different alleles of these genes on both chromosomes, he can have up to six different types of HLA class 1 molecules. In case of HLA class 2 genes, these genes encode both alpha and beta peptide chain of class 2 molecules. In case of HLA DP and DQ, if alleles that encode alpha and beta peptide chain of these molecules are different on both chromosomes, a person can have up to four different types of HLA DP and four different types of DQ molecules. In case of HLA DR, there can be more than one gene for beta peptide chain. So a person can have more than two HLA DR molecules as well. So in this case, a person has six different types of HLA class one molecules and 12 different types of HLA class two molecules. So when we perform HLA typing, we can either identify HLA molecules or HLA antigens, or we can perform more detailed analysis to know which HLA alleles a person has. During their development, T cells learn to recognize self HLA molecules. So there will be no immune response and no antibodies to these molecules in future. However, when a person comes across non-self HLA molecules through blood transfusions, pregnancy or previous organ transplants, it can result in formation of anti-HLA antibodies. These antibodies can be present in up to 30% of people before transplant. So why we want to know if a person has anti-HLA antibodies or no? Because these antibodies that are present before transplant can result in acute or hyperacute graft rejection. Now we will discuss a serology technique used for HLA antigen typing to know which HLA antigens a person has. This technique is called complement dependent cytotoxicity or CDC. We use lymphocytes for identification of HLA antigens as T cells have HLA class 1 antigens on their cell surface while B cells have both HLA class 1 and class 2 molecules on their surface. In this technique, if we have known HLA antibodies, we can identify HLA antigens with help of these antibodies. Suppose we have HLA antibodies to HLA A2 molecule in this medium. And we want to know if a person has HLA A2 antigens on their cell surface. So we will add lymphocytes of that person to this medium. If that lymphocytes have HLA A2 antigens on their cell surface, then antibodies present in medium will bind to these antigens. Then we add complement. 
Complement will result in complement dependent cytotoxicity, resulting in damage to cell membranes of these lymphocytes, ultimately, resulting in lysis of these cells. Then we add a fluorescent dye. This dye will pass through damaged cell membranes and will stain dead cells. A positive reaction is considered if there is significant number of stained cells. A positive reaction in this situation means that person had HLA-A2 antigens on surface of their lymphocytes. This technique is used for HLA antigen typing in which we have several HLA antibodies. This technique is also used for measurement of panel reactive antibodies and for CDC crossmatch. In case of PRA and CDC crossmatch, we identify HLA antibodies with help of CDC technique. So this technique is used for identification of both HLA antigens and HLA antibodies. There are some disadvantages associated with this technique, like low level of HLA antibodies can be missed, as we need to have sufficient number of stain cells to have a positive reaction. Similarly, this technique will identify only complement binding antibodies and non-complement binding antibodies will be missed. Another phenomena associated with this technique is called cross-reactivity. To understand this phenomena, we need to know that each HLA molecule has a unique set of epitopes. Each epitope has a unique number and sequence of amino acids. In this example, we have three HLA antigens, HLA A1, A3 and A11. All these antigens have three epitopes and each antigen has a unique combination of epitopes. But some of these epitopes are shared among different HLA molecules. Like epitope A is present in HLA A1 and HLA A3 as well as in HLA A11. As HLA antibodies bind to these epitopes, so anti HLA A1 antibody that bind to HLA A1 antigen can also bind to HLA A3 antigen and HLA A11 antigen due to shared epitope. So one antibody can bind to a group of antigens. This group of antigens is called common reactive epitope group. So anti HLA A1 can bind to A1, A3, A11, A29 and all these antigens. Now we will see how we perform HLA antigen typing with help of CDC technique. For that we have a tray that has small chambers and each chamber has a known HLA antibody. We can use antibodies present in serum or we can use monoclonal antibodies. Suppose in this case we have monoclonal antibodies present in each chamber. Then we add lymphocytes of person to know his HLA antigens to each chamber. Suppose this person has HLA A1 and A11 antigens and we want to know what other antigens he has. Then we add complement and then fluorescent dye. So HLA antigens present on surface of lymphocytes will bind to corresponding antibodies in different chambers. So at the end of this reaction, we can identify which HLA antigens this person has. We can see we have confirmed that he has HLA A1 and A11 and we can also see which HLA B and HLA DR antigens this person has.
However, all HLA molecules cannot be identified by serology and total number of HLA antigens identified by serology are only around 160, while total number of HLA class 1 and class 2 molecules identified are in thousands. Reasons for this low number of HLA antigens identified by serology include unavailability of antibodies and cross-reactivity. We have seen that all HLA molecules cannot be identified by serology method. However, we can identify most of HLA alleles with different DNA-based techniques. Then we can compare HLA alleles of a recipient with HLA alleles of potential donor. Most of these DNA-based techniques use different types of PCRs. One of most common and routinely used method is sequence-specific oligonucleotide probe or PCR-SSOP. In this type of PCR, HLA alleles are identified with help of oligonucleotide probes. These oligonucleotide probes are part of HLA allele but not complete allele. There are different methods to perform this technique, however, most commonly these oligonucleotide probes are attached to different beads. Suppose we want to know which HLA alleles a person has. First, we will perform a PCR reaction with help of biotin labeled primers. So each PCR product will have biotin attached to it. So these amplified alleles will bind to corresponding oligonucleotide on beads. Suppose we have an allele which has corresponding oligonucleotide at bead 3. So this allele will bind to its corresponding oligonucleotide. Then a tracer molecule like a fluorescent molecule attaches to this biotin molecule. This fluorescence or positive reaction is detected by analyzer telling us which beads have a positive reaction. So in this case we have HLA allele that has corresponding oligonucleotide on bead number 3. So we can identify all alleles of a person by this method. We can identify HLA alleles with intermediate or high resolution depending on number of oligonucleotide probes used. Another PCR method used is sequence specific primer or PCR SSP. This is not routinely used method. This method can be used for resolution of ambiguity and identification of HLA alleles. Because with this method we can identify two alleles even if they have difference of single nucleotide. In this PCR, no PCR amplification occurs even if there is a difference of single nucleotide. Suppose this is HLA allele which we want to identify. Different primers will not be able to perform amplification of this allele. Only primer that is allele specific and that is meant to amplify this allele will result in PCR reaction and will result in formation of PCR products. These PCR products are then identified with agarose gel electrophoresis method. In both PCR methods we discussed, we first perform PCR reaction and then identify PCR products. However, in case of real-time PCR, PCR results are obtained at same time of polymerization of DNA. In this type of PCR, with each PCR cycle, a tracer or fluorescent molecule is released. So when fluorescence reaches to beyond a threshold point, then we consider it a positive reaction. This method takes less time, so we can use this method in case of deceased donor transplants.
Another DNA-based technique is called DNA sequencing in which we identify each nucleotide of HLA allele. We have already discussed how we identify HLA antigens and HLA alleles. Now we will discuss about identification of HLA antibodies. One aspect of identification of HLA antibodies is called panel reactive antibody or PRA. With this test we identify a person has antibodies to how much percent of population. We perform this test based on CDC technique. We have a tray in which we have 30 to 60 chambers. So each chamber has lymphocyte derived from one person. Or we can use purified HLA antigens derived from one person in each chamber. Then we add recipient serum to each of these chambers. And then we add complement and fluorescent dye. A positive reaction in this situation means that person has antibodies to that particular person. In this case, we have nine positive reactions. So PRA of this person is nine out of 60 or 15%. That means this person has HLA antibodies to 15% of population or 15% of potential donors. There are different levels of PRA beyond which a person is considered to be sensitized. And beyond some point, a person is considered to be highly sensitized. And in case of kidney transplant, if PRA is 80%, it is considered that person is highly sensitized. In this situation, person will have additional points on waiting list and will have priority in transplant. Up to now, we have discussed identification of HLA antibodies with help of HLA antigens present on cell surface. However, we can attach these antigens on surface of beads and identify HLA antibodies with help of these beads. This method is called solid phase bead based method. Suppose in this case we have two beads. Bead 1 has one type of HLA antigen present on its surface while bead 2 has different types of HLA antigens. So when we add these beads to recipient serum, if serum has antibodies against these HLA antigens, then these antibodies will bind to HLA antigens on surface of beads. Then we add a tracer antibody or anti-IgG antibody that is fluorescent labeled. This tracer antibody will bind to antibody present on HLA antigen. Then we detect this fluorescence. There are two methods of detection of this fluorescence. One is by conventional flow cytometer. Nowadays, most commonly used method is laser fluoroanalyzer. In this method, first laser beam identify which bead it is. The second laser beam will identify fluorescence intensity measured in mean fluorescence intensity. So with these laser beams, we can identify which HLA molecule it is and what is intensity of fluorescence on this bead. This fluorescence intensity is not equivalent to antibody titer. It is semi-quantitative measure of antibody. So mean fluorescence intensity or MFI of more than 1000 is mostly considered positive. There are some advantages of this method. One advantage is that this method only detects HLA antibodies. 
And this method can detect both complement binding and non-complement binding antibodies. And this method can also detect low level of antibodies. We use three different types of beads for assessment of HLA antibodies of a person. One type is called pooled antigen panels or pooled antigen beads. These beads have HLA antigens derived from 3 to 5 persons on its surface. So each bead has many HLA antigens derived from 3 to 5 different persons. So each bead has either HLA class 1 or class 2 molecules. These beads are used for screening purpose and when we add these beads to recipient serum, the result will be either positive that indicate that HLA antibodies are present or result will be negative that means HLA antibodies are not present. Second type of beads are called phenotype panels or phenotype beads. These beads have HLA antigens on its surface derived from one person. So each bead has either HLA class 1 or class 2 antigens. So in this case we have two beads. One bead has HLA class 1 antigens derived from one person and second bead has HLA class 2 antigens. These beads are used to calculate PRA. So if we have 100 beads that have HLA class 1 antigens and 100 beads that have different HLA class 2 antigens, we can calculate PRA based on number of beads that have positive reaction. Third type of beads are called single antigen beads. These beads have one type of HLA antigen present on surface. These antigens are allele specific and these antigens may have difference of one amino acid. So each bead has only one type of HLA molecule. So when we add these beads to recipient serum, this will give us complete description of HLA antibody profile of recipient. This method is routinely used in many centers as necessary test before kidney transplant. We can use antibody profile of a person measured by single antigen bead to calculate CPRA or calculated PRA. In this case, we see antibody profile of person and then we compare it with antigen profile of potential donors. We can also use result of this test for virtual cross match in which we identify if potential recipient has antibodies to donor specific HLA antigens. Now we will discuss about different methods of cross match. In cross match we identify if a recipient has antibodies to donor specific antigens. One method to perform cross match is by CDC technique. In this method we take recipient serum and then we add lymphocytes from potential donor to the serum. If recipient serum has antibodies to donor HLA molecules, this will result in positive reaction. Positive reaction means positive cross match. It means person has antibodies to donor specific HLA molecules. This is generally considered contraindication to transplant. We can perform cross match of T cells or B cells to know if antibodies are against class 1 molecules or class 2 molecules. However, there are some disadvantages of this technique. We can get false negative results due to low level of antibodies 
are due to non complement binding antibodies. Similarly, in some cases, we can get false positive results due to presence of non HLA antibodies or IgM antibodies. Another method of cross match is by flow cross match. This technique is similar to CDC cross match. We have recipient serum and then we add lymphocytes from donor. But these lymphocytes have fluorescent labeled markers that can differentiate T cells from B cells. If recipient serum has antibodies against donor HLA molecules, these antibodies will attach to these HLA antigens. Then we add a tracer antibody that is fluorescent label anti-IgG antibody. These antibodies bind to anti-HLA antibodies. Then with the help of flow cytometer, we can identify if cross match for P or T cell is positive. This method is more sensitive. It can detect low level of antibodies and it can also detect non complement binding antibodies. Another type of cross match is called virtual cross match. This type of cross match is being increasingly used in many centers. But in this case, we do not actually perform any physical cross match. We need information about recipient antibody profile by single antigen bead method and we also need to know donor HLA typing. So we see if recipient has any antibodies against donor HLA molecules. This cross match can be performed in short period of time but we need to have up to date antibody profile of recipient. So we have discussed how we perform HLA typing and how we assess antibody profile of recipient and how we perform cross match to know if recipient has donor specific antibodies. Extent of assessment of HLA profile and assessment of HLA antibodies depend on type of transplant and available time.